Hi, my name is Melissa Sprague. Um, whoop, I just lost my notes. Oh. I'm in my second year at NHCI where I am studying education, special education, and mindful communications. Today is January 31st of 2021, and it is about 4 o'clock p.m. Um, so today we're talking with Sussy. Sussy is one of our favorite people. She is an artist. She is a jeweler and a metalsmith. She has a studio in the Riverview Mill in Wilton, which is this beautiful historical repurposed mill building in downtown Wilton, which is completely full of all different kinds of artists and their studios and their galleries. And it's really extremely magical. It's a wonderful space and Sussy is a wonderful person. Sussy, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Well, I've been um, passionate about my craft, which is metals, particularly jewelry, um, since 1975. And I am self-taught. I have, although I have taken uh, great workshops with, with people that I've really been intrigued with or um, had specific techniques that um, I was interested in. So I feel like I, I, I grew in ways that were opportunities that were given to me. So I grew in ways rather than just doing, I, I began with turquoise, making turquoise jewelry and I've grown from that. Um, so I really became interested. I, I decided that I was gonna get a master's in architecture out in California. And I ended up working for a couple of years in a supply house to that supplied um, you know, metals, stones, tools to Bay Area jewelers and got hooked, you know. So that became my passion. I got a job back in Oklahoma, back home in Oklahoma and worked at that for a couple of years and then went out on my own. It was a time when there were fewer uh, jewelers out and a vendor as a vendor out in craft fairs and everything like that. So it was a really good time to start. And um, I've owned my own shop in Oklahoma. Um, I've uh, been here in New Hampshire for about 34 years now and have uh, become a juried member in the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen. My current studio, I do repair and custom and teach. And I do my own design, of course. But teaching is like invaluable to me in many ways. And um, having my own space, it's become like a womb. So I invite people in and we have a good time and um, learn, learn a lot. I like to pass on the skills. Awesome. Well, um, we're really glad you do. We're glad you're here. Thanks. <laughs> so I'm asking everyone to take some time to reflect on what their lives were like before COVID and what a typical day was like. And then I want you to think about what it's like now. Um, what has changed? What's different for you now? Okay, yes, I know there are a lot of differences. Um, prior to COVID, I, in fact, the week that I shut down, I had uh, 16 students a week. And that was great income for me, but it was just also busy, busy, busy in the studio, which was really great. Um, I would have people just drop in and bring in um, items for repair or make appointments and sit down with people discussing face to face, you know, um, of course, going out and getting supplies whenever I needed and uh, uh, or orders, even orders, you know, uh, coming in by mail or UPS. Um, so it was really, I was busy all the time. I was, I'm a workaholic with my, when it comes to my studio. So it became, you know, um, just routine to do that. Uh, and so in March, when the, you know, closing up hit New Hampshire, it was, uh, it, I just made the decision quickly to cancel all my classes and just shut everything down, shut the studio down. I was fortunate to be able to get onto some unemployment that helped me uh, at the beginning. So that helped with income, but it really, I really suffered with um, having my social uh, uh, 
contact uh, a lot because I'm a very social butterfly and I, I really missed seeing people and talking to people. It wasn't the same talking to them via email or on phone. Yeah, didn't work for me. <laughs> But I was able to sit at home, especially during the summer when it got warmer, and do a lot of reflection, um, which was really nice because usually my summers are very busy because I'm involved in the Craftsman's Fair, and that is a big deal that you work towards, and that happens in August, so it takes up my summer. But it was canceled. <laughs> um, I did creatively, interestingly enough, I had a real hard time bringing up those creative needs that I to play. And even though I had time, I would come in and I'd find myself being more fastidious about organization. <laughs> so it wasn't a total loss. Um, I also had a fortunate thing happen during that time that I found romance. So I had time for that. <laughs> so that was a that was a plus. Um, as as I did get a few calls and a few students, my I did start classes in, uh, at the beginning of the summer, and it was more one on one. I gradually did two on two or two people in the in the class at a time, and like you're nine feet apart, so it was less social, and. Um, it, probably uh, busier for me really going back and forth and teaching different levels at different time at the same time um, it was that was good and bad but I never look at things being things that being um, a crisis in that way uh, you just roll with the punches you know you do go with the flow basically so um, I began getting more um, uh, actually, I actually found uh, in November that I actually started getting more uh, calls for making custom pieces. And for Christmas time, especially, I found that my support system increased locally, which I was really very surprised because I expected uh, more online people who did online sales and things like that would uh, would increase and they probably have I don't they probably have too but I was just really surprised that I I definitely was a destination that people and people reached out to me and I had a good support system over Christmas so uh, you know it's the COVID has definitely made me slow down as far as um, being social with people meeting with people having dinner I don't go into restaurants I mean I'm being very cautious and I feel responsible for my part of it. So, and the studio has had to change as well that way. So definitely masks, social distancing. If, if I have too many people in my little small gallery area, I have to ask people to stand outside or different parts of the room. Um, but yeah, I think, that, you know, it's just an experience. It's something you have to work through and be patient with and definitely be kind to each other, which I found everybody has been. That's yeah. wonderful. Um, so what have been some of your biggest challenges through all of this? Uh, <clears throat> well, the price of metal has gone way up. <laughs> so definitely spending, uh, you know, ha having the money to get supplies not just metal, but tools, things like that. Um, usually, especially before Christmas in previous times, I could count on getting uh, my supplies sent to me, you know, and expect getting it two days or five days between that time. And I experienced times when I wouldn't get something for two weeks and that made it a little, um, a little caused a little anxiety <laughs> you know so um that's pro that's probably been the hardest thing that i can think of right now yeah definitely that is very maddening <laughs> um, okay so i mean how have you dealt with overcoming those challenges anything in particular that you've come up with or just breathing 
<laughs> keep on breathing and just as i said roll roll with the flow you know and be patient everybody yeah. has been with me the clients who are patient too there were there were a few people that i did not accomplish those gifts completed before christmas you know which was disappointing for them but they were they understood you know so it's happened they got out after christmas but it oh, worked i love it <laughs> It's really encouraging. You hear so many negative stories about how people are treating one another and it's encouraging to hear I such a positive know. story. Yeah. Um, so how are you finding comfort or meaning during these challenging times? Well, uh, like I said, romance has happened. So my boyfriend helps. He and I are in a bubble. <laughs> so that helps. And I do have a few selective friends um, that I am around. I'm also, uh, this sounds strange, but I find comfort in helping other people. And I have one, particularly one friend who is um, medically challenged quite a bit. And so I find, I try to be there for her as much as I can because she needs it. So helping somebody else, it really, you know, bounces back to me feeling better about myself. You bet. I don't think that's strange at all. Um, <laughs> So how about new projects, new hobbies? Um, obviously you told us about a new relationship. Can you tell us any more about that? Can you tell us about your partner? Well, he's a very um, hands-on person. He, he is very skilled at, at mechanical and um, uh, repair for the house, you know? So uh, that's, been, that's been interesting comparing and trying to understand each, what each other does. You know, learn that's learning new things as well. Um, he's a worker too, so he's always willing to pitch in and help me, and I do the same for him. So that's been kind of nice. Um, I hobbies. My hobby was traveling, and I can't do that, so <laughs> that is totally out of the picture. Um, and projects, yeah, I've been experimenting with different techniques and metals, things like that. Um, Valentine's is coming up. So right now it's like, okay, what can I create with hearts or what would make people's hearts sing, you know, with what I make? So that's, it's kind of goal oriented. I have a, an end goal that helps me keep going. Yeah. Also, uh, um, you became a model this year. Are you willing to tell us the story <laughs> of that? Sure. I have a, a, a another studio person in the mill that is a professional photographer and her photography is really based on portrait photographers. So she would, uh, you know, have, um, she was the type of person that, you know, wedding or uh, family photos that were needed professionally or just for nice pictures that, that was her uh, income and boom that quit for her well she ended up connecting with some different so one day she does up to the studio i need you <laughs> And it ended up that she wanted me to photograph uh, a blanket, a llama blanket. It was beautiful um, blanket. And she's so good. She made me look great. <laughs> so it was kind of fun. <laughs> New. Yeah, I can tell you I saw some of those pictures and they are so artistic. The light, it is like a Rembrandt painting. I mean, it's so beautiful. There is such a yep. sense of serenity and inner and outer beauty. It's really very impressive. It's beautiful. Yeah, particularly since the products, uh, the company uh, is called Dharma Crafts and they uh, sell um, uh, yoga, meditation, that type of thing, that, that type of product. So yeah, it was, it. it was great. It was fun. <laughs> So how do you feel like this experience of living through a pandemic, how has that Good. changed you? How has that changed me? Um, I think reality of uh, being 2000 miles away from family and not 
not being able to help when my sister, my, both of my sisters have had medical issues and I haven't been able to be there for them. Um, having friends here that have gotten sick or, sick or um, have been traumatized by the whole affair because of their own uh, frailties and being really afraid and seeing friends who you usually know is really happy and uh, carefree, seeing them, you know, kind of become or experience this in a more negative way. And it's really hard to uplift other people. Um, so it, my, I just, just making aware and making sure that I'm aware that I'm um, who I am, where I'm at. I mean, always questioning myself. I don't know if that's changing, if that's changed or, but I find myself probably doing that more. Yeah, no, that's a wonderful answer. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. Is there anything else that you would like to share or say? Any other feelings? Uh, I, I can't think of anything other than uh, the best therapy that I could find is get into something that you're passionate about so that you can have that meditative feeling about it and that will keep your spirits up. I love it. Susie, thank you so much for being willing to do this and telling us your story. Yeah. I appreciate it so much. Sure, Melissa. That's <laughs> and I feel honored that you asked me. <laughs> I feel honored that you said yes. Thank you so much.